Korriban, as we know it now, is an uninhabitable ball of dust and shadows whose primary population, although not listed as such in the Galactic Atlas, are the ghosts who haunt this tomb world that was once, a long time ago, as though in some other galaxy far off in the mists of time, the lush, fertile homeworld of a promising young humanoid species who called themselves the Sith. The planet Korriban, located in Sector R5 on the usual galactic planar grid, is located just below the galactic rim's mass equator. The species of the Sith thus developed as mostly humanoid, but with slight physiological differences from the more coreward humanoid species. The average Sith skin color was red, and their cheeks bore muscular skin flaps distending from their zygomatic arches. Often horn-like protuberances of bone would extend from their upper zygomatic arch or around the brow of their subocular alcoves. Sith hair was of a peculiar follicle type, such that it tended to bristle and behave more like whiskers than fur. Despite its remote location from Mercata Prime in Sector G11, on the opposite side of Galactic Hub, the Sith homeworld of Korriban did fall temporarily under the grip of the Rakatan Infinite Empire. The Rakatans invaded Korriban sometime between 30,000 and 28,000 years BBY. Their legions outnumbered and outgunned the then still relatively primitive and tribally organized semi nomadic clans of Sith on Korriban. The Rakatans, who had developed use of what would later be considered the dark side of the Force, and combined it with early starship technology, used their Force powers to enslave all the species of the then-known galaxy. All that is, except at least one. Simultaneous to their use of slave labor to construct the Star Forge above the star of the Rakatans' homeworld system, a time the Rakatans considered the height of their infinite empire. There was a rebellion against their rule on the distant planet of Korriban. The word in their own language, Sithari, means simply overlord. The original Sithari to unify the Sith on Korriban was named Adas, and he led his people in a planet-wide revolution against an expulsion from the entire planet of the Rakata stationed there. King Adas humiliated the Rakata by turning their own technologies against them, but even he eventually succumbed to death during the conquests of Zyost, Malachor V, and Tund. King Adas, who lived over 300 years, though not even his precise regnal dates are remembered now, became the archetype for all the ambitions of the Sith to follow. He unified the Sith, conquered a far more powerful foe, and insofar as the Rakatan Empire fell to a species-specific plague soon thereafter, may have stood alone in the entire galaxy at that time to have successfully stood up against them. By the end of the Subterra era, and beginning of the Mandaron period in galactic history, contemporary to the Second Great Schism in the Jedi Order, then still located on Osis, and the beginning of the Hundred Year Darkness, following the recusal of 11,933 BBY, stating Jedi independence from the Republic, and the subsequent pious Dea Millennia. The planet of Korriban was ruled under a single king. Before the ascendance of Dothka Garaush, around 7,000 BBY, Korriban had been regionalized between competing rulers 
all vying to reunify the planet under their own dynasty. Many of the Sith population on Korriban had begun to migrate to the nearby planet Ziaost in the Estron sector, E4 on the usual map, using the Rakatan interstellar ship technology. The remaining populations of Sith on Korriban were largely reduced to feudalism and competition between the various regional self-proclaiming Sithari resulted in a simple two-class structure for the remaining populations to fall into. Dathka Garouj was from the warrior class, although had managed to also study Sith sorcery, the subject usually secret except to the opposite class, the various sects of wizards. Raouche was able to reunify Korriban under a single ruler by replacing his natural biological heart organ with a melt-massive type crystal imbued electromagnetically with the souls of the many thousands of dead Sith kings and warriors entombed in the valley of Gog near the Korriban equator, and particularly the other thirteen Sith sorcerers who had been most powerful since the reign of Sitharia Adas. Grouch used this melt-massive crystal heart to control an army of reanimated corpses, which he caused to become his loyal undead zombies using a Sith sorcery spell called the Tsaiwinoka Hayakut in Sith, or the reanimated dead in basic. These zombies remain neither dead nor alive, and bound to serve Grouch's crystal heart in the Valley of Gold for at least the next 7,000 years. Nevertheless, Grouch himself, the first ruler of all the Korriban Sith since the Sithari King Adas, reigned only 50 years before being felled by assassins. At the beginning of Dathka Garush's reign on Korriban, it was already an environmental decline However, by the end of his reign, Korriban was almost devoid of foliage and, as it remains, a dust bowl ghost planet, making Zeost, then undergoing an ice age, still more preferable to the remaining Sith on other worlds than repopulating Korriban. Following the reign of Dathka Grush, Global culture he left behind remained little changed from the strict two-class feudalism it had degenerated into before. Aside from having succeeded in achieving unified global government under a single dynast. Thus, during this time, contemporary to the earliest years of the Hundred Years' Darkness, around the same time as the Second Great Schism among the Jedi on Osis, the Sith Sorcerer class began to evolve, while the Sith Warrior class began to devolve. For two generations following Dathka Garush's death, the Warrior class of Sith Masasai was reduced using Sith Sorcery to more savage and degenerate animalistic forms of beings, while the Sorcerers themselves consolidated power to their own class by pledging their control of the Masasi to the global Dark Lord of Korriban. For three total generations, the Garush dynasty prevailed. Following his murder, a direct heir presumptive, whose name history has since forgotten, assumed his global imperial throne. As is often the case with studying them, it appears the name of this heir to the title of Dark Lord of the Sith is unknown due to his having been killed and all records of his reign erased by his successor, who in this case was also presumably his own son. It was during the reign of this third generation of the Graush dynasty on Korriban that the Dark Jedi discovered the planet Korriban. Although they had achieved a global level of government, the feudal Sith on Korriban were largely isolated from their fellow Sith on neighboring Zeost. Thinned out by aeons of civil war, 
The populations of Korriban Sith were also partially devolved Masasi warriors, and their dwindling class of magician priests grown subservient to the global dynasty. It was because of their low degree of social preservation, their generally atrophied sense of duty to preserve and learn from history, that the feudal Sith on Korriban, both the retarded Masasi warriors and the Sith sorcerer cultists alike, bowed before the arrival of the aliens and hailed them as gods. Considering their entire history as long veneration of the trait of superhuman strength supposedly embodied in the Sithari king Adas, who repelled alien invaders, it is actually more ironic than one might at first suspect that the Korriban Sith would welcome new alien invaders as gods. However far removed their moral sense was, the Sith's appetite for dominance was, in this event, easily twisted in their minds by the fallen Dark Jedi. The name of the second Grauge dynast has been lost, as of now, to these records of history. The name of Dathka Garush's presumable grandson, the global Dark Lord of the Korriban Sith, who ruled the planet's three-tiered feudal class system at the time the Dark Jedi arrived on Korriban, was Hakagram Graush. His legacy as a tyrant was minuscule, mainly consisting in collecting the tithes of loyalty. He was beheaded on the spot by the Dark Jedi, Ajunta Pal, and with that came an end to the rule of Korriban by a solely Sith lineage. Thus the second Dark Lord of the Sith, following the short-lived dynasty of Dathka Garosh, was not of the Sith species. Ajunta Pal was a near humanoid, former Jedi Master, who had been expelled from the Order for experimenting with alchemy and learning how to create and shape life mentally on a subcellular level. He and his followers had, at the time of the Second Great Schism, divided from and gone to war against the Jedi on Osis, a conflict remembered by historians as the Hundred Year Darkness. Following a final defeat on the planet Corbos, the Jedi exiled Paul and his dissident group. History records that Paul was initially rejected as a god by the global king of Korriban, Hagakam. Grush, grandson of the first Dark Lord of the Sith, who had a bit more sense than the rest of his people, at least. Nevertheless, Paul prevailed against King Grosh's second-in-command, the Sithari's so-called Shadow Hand, to betray his loyalty to his Sith King. In the end, Paul slaughtered Grosh on his own sword, and ascended as the Genarii, or Dark Lord, of all of the Sith on Korriban, as well as Zyost. The ineffectual leadership of the Grauj dynasty was carried on under the original Sith Empire, with Pal largely focused away from administrative organization. The other fallen Jedi having all been declared equal Dark Lords of the Sith it was only a short time until Paul was replaced by a successor. Darth Endendu was a student of the alchemical work of Paul's fellow fallen Jedi and Sith Dark Lord, Karnas Mur, who had learned Mur's secret of transposing his willpower, memories, and thoughts onto a non-living object, the Mur Talisman. Darth Endadu was a humanoid male from the planet Prakrith in the Deep Core who had journeyed to Korriban either with or shortly after the first Dark Jedi to settle there. He was younger than Mirror, Paul, Draipa, and the other Sith Lords, and had worked a long time in secret on perfecting Mirror's transference method by combining it with a form of the midichlorian manipulation method of Paul 
to extend and prolong his own life indefinitely. Following his inevitable descent from the other Sith Dark Lords of the time, he fled back to his homeworld Prakrith and subjugated his fellow humanoids there into a global cult, worshipping him as their god, called the Malevolence. This cult persisted there, worshipping him, until they and he were finally killed by Darth Weirlock in 137 ABY, making him, at his death, around the age of 7,000 years old. The next Dark Lord to succeed the throne over all Korriban and the related systems of the Sith Empire following the exile of Darth Andedu was Tulak Horde. Regarding the person of whom nearly all information has been lost, including his actual facial appearance and the dates of his life. It is known Ravon, several centuries following Horde's death, donned his battle mask. What subspecies of humanoid Tulak Horde was beneath that mask is not even now known. Under his rule, the Sith Empire expanded and with his shadow hand second in command, the Dashad Kem Val, and his apprentice, Orta Salin, they single-handedly resubjugated the planets of Yin and Shabash, as well as discovered and conquered the Dromon system. His titles included Lord of Hate, Master of the Gathering Darkness, and Lord of the Sith although it remains a historical anachronism as to how he was in possession of one he was one of the earliest beings to master the lightsaber after the death of Tulak Horde which we can only assume was around 5100 BBY the Sith were once again left without a unifying leader and quickly fell into strife between the leaders of the various factions of the Empire while Tulak Horde had assumed power following a duel against his rival, Kem Val, whom he then made his personal servant, the duel to follow Horde's demise was not so pleasantly settled. Marco Ragnos, a Sith human hybrid descendant of the original Dark Jedi to settle on Korriban now some four generations past, beheaded his rival for the title of Sith Dark Lord a fellow Sith human named Simus. Simus, whose head managed to still live on, was preserved in a crystalline container and later made part of the Sith Council, on which he served loyally for hundreds of years. Following the death of Marco Ragnos in 5000 BBY, the Sith Council consisted of Simus, Dorgal Ram, Horak Mul, Shar Dakran, Garu, Tritus Nal, Naga Sadow, and Ludo Kreesh, as well as, ostensibly, Ragnos' own young disciple, Tenebrai, whom Ragnos had appointed Lord Vitiite over Medrias, then renamed Nathema, whom was a member in Absentia. Krish and Sadao became rivals for the chief position in the council and posited their rivalry in a disagreement over the direction for the future of the Sith Empire. The seven other members of the Sith Council, with Tenebrae in absentia, appointed Naga Sadao as the first Darth of Zeost and he commanded the council from their headquarters in the great citadel on that planet. Sadao's philosophy of Sith Imperial Expansionism was juxtaposed to that of Ludo Kreesh, his rival, but their duel for dominance was interrupted by the apparition of their predecessor, Marco Ragnos, followed immediately by the arrival of lost hyperlane star charters Gav and Jory Daragon from the Republic. Seeing the misfortune of the Daragons in stumbling into Sith space as an opportunity to expand the Sith Empire, 
Nagasada liberated the Daragons, returned their ship, and sent Jory back to Republic space. Through duplicitous conniving, Sadao had finally killed fellow council member Simus and encouraged the other Sith councillors, including rival Ludo Kresh, to believe it was the work of the Republic. Kresh quickly discovered the truth of this matter, and leaving the Sith Council split, with fellow councillors Horak Maul and Gal Ram behind him, Ludo Kresh then led an attack on Sadao's fortress on the planet Kar Delba, which, it turned out, was a trap set by Sadao for Kresh. Sadao allowed Jory Daragon to escape in their starship Starbreaker 12 into hyperspace and surprised Kresh with a fleet of warships hidden behind Kar Delba's moon, Kar Shion and by turning his own Masasi soldiers and crew to mutiny against the captains of his ships. Following Kresh's failed uprising on Kar Delba, the remaining Sith counselors sided with Sadao, and not long afterward, Kresh's flagship entered the Zeost system bearing a warning against following Sadao, but Sadao ordered the ship shot down by his new Sith apprentice, Gav Daragon and Kresh was believed killed. Leading a massive fleet of warships, Sadao then entered hyperspace bound toward the Koro's major system, Gavdaragon's homeworld. From his eye-like meditation sphere poised above the Primus Galud star, Sadao created magical illusions of additional invaders as he commanded his armada's attacks on Koro's major, Coruscant, and Kyrek. Rebelling against his Sith master, Gav Daragon fired on and boarded Sadao's meditation sphere, forcing Sadao to evacuate it and breaking his battle meditation illusions, resulting in the defeat of the Sith invasions on all three planets where they had struck. Just before Republic Koro's ships led by Jory Daragon and Empress Tita herself, who had arrived to save Gav Daragon, could do so. Nagasato detonated the supergiant star Primus Galud and retreated with his Sith fleet to Korriban. But it was a trap. Ludo Karish had faked his death and had, in Nagasato's absence, militarized the remaining Sith to prepare for an invasion. He capitalized on the Sadao's sudden reappearance from hyperspace to attack Sadao's diminished fleet. Sadao was not finished yet, however, and blockading his flagship between two Masasai mutinied vessels, sent a third damaged craft on a suicide run into Ludo Krish's ship, killing him while Krish begged for his life. As Republic warships entered the Korriban system from hyperspace, Nagasato made his retreat to the Yavin 4 moon by using the force to supernova the nearby Denari binary star system. Ludo Krish's son, Elko Krish, whom Krish had hidden away in secret near the Stygian caldera, was another survivor of the Sith Empire's failed expansion into Republic space, however would die many years later of a ruptured stomach from overconsumption of alcohol on the eve of his staging a massive retaliation and invasion against the Republic. However, the last Sith standing at the Battle of Korriban between Sadao, Kresh, and the Republic was Shar Dakhan, a Sadao loyalist, pure-blood Sith ruler of planet Chehodos, whom had also led the attack on the Republic capital of Coruscant. After Sadao fled, the mantle of Dark Lord passed for the eighth time, this time to Shar Dakhan. Cornered by the Republic on and around Korriban, Shar Dakhan ordered suicide after suicide run against the Republic blockade, eventually depleting his own population to only a few. 
So fell the original Sith Empire. The final Sith Council of Ten had consisted of Marco Ragnos, Ludo Krish, Simus, Dorgal Ram, Horak Mu, Naga Sadow, Shar Dakhan, Garu, Tritus Nal, and Tenebrae, Lord Vitiate, over Sith Nathema. Aside from Tenebrae and Elko Kreesh, the only survivors of Sith following the Korriban bombing campaign by the Republic were the lost tribe of the Sith, the descendants of Yarrow Corsin's Sith Dreadnought Omen, which crashed on the remote planet Kesh after being ambushed by Jedi in Republic space above the largest moon of Phygon III. From Marco Ragnos' death in 5000 BBY until the end of the Great Hyperspace War and the dissolution of the original Sith Space Empire, only some 86 years passed, which was a blink of an eye in the Sith of those days, most of whom, if they could survive trying to be killed, lived to be at least hundreds of years old. Consider Tenebrae, Lord Vitiate, first Sith Emperor, ostensibly the acting ninth Dark Lord of this Sith, who was trained in his youth by Marco Ragnos, and who retreated from public life following the signing of the Treaty of Coruscant some 1,467 years later. After the battles of Korriban, the Sith Empire was disbanded and its residents fled into deep space to avoid Republic reprisal bombing campaigns. One group, led by the Lord Vitiate, Tenebrae, the young apprentice of Mark Aragnos, made a series of random hyperspace jumps on a quest to discover the long-lost planet once in the Sith Empire of Drummond Koss. Finally, after a twenty-year exodus across the unknown regions, they found the planet and settled there, establishing the capital of the reformed Sith Empire as the Sith Imperial Citadel in Koss City. Unlike the original ten-member Council of the Sith, between the arrival of the fallen Jedi to Korriban and the battles of Korriban around an aeon later. There were twelve members of the Dark Council in the reformed Sith Empire, but one of them was the Emperor, secretly dubbed the Sithari, and his Shadow Hand apprentice, dubbed the Janari. Under Emperor Tenebrae, most of the first members of the Dark Council besides his Shadow Hand Apprentice, Sith Female Exile Kreesh, a descendant of Ludo Kreesh, were assassinated in 3950 BBY for conspiring against the Emperor's plans for another war with the Republic. It is believed the only surviving members of the original Sith Council's first purge were the male Sith. Igrol, female Sith Nyris, and male human Zedrix, who, along with the Emperor, Exile Kreesh as his apprentice, and Lord Scourge, whom had carried out the purge, made up half of the new Dark Council of the Sith Empire. Scourge lured Zedrix to Bothrida and slew him then captured the Jedi amnesiac Revan, whom had, upon regaining his memories, slain Darth Nyrus with her own Sith lightning. Finally, four years after the conspiracy of the Dark Council against the Emperor's pro-war plans was first discovered, all its participants had been destroyed. 
However, the Sith Empire was now no longer a secret from the Galactic Republic. Due to the Jedi Ravon recovering his memories while in the custody of Darth's Nyrus and Scourge. The Jedi Ravon had been shot down by Scourge and Nyrus over the Emperor's original homeworld of Nathema. Scourge trained Ravon for three years before Ravon's Jedi Padawan Mitrix Surik attempted to rescue him, and it was during the Night of the Purge, while under attack by Darth Nyrus, that Ravon regained his memories. Scourge then betrayed Ravon and turned him over to the Emperor, for which the Emperor made Scourge immortal, dubbing him the Emperor's Wrath. The Emperor took Ravon as his new apprentice, and it was around this time that Exile Kreesh, his prior apprentice, fled from the Cathal Rift to Republic space. While Emperor Tenebrae apprenticed Ravon, Ravon was reunited with his friend and fellow fallen Jedi, Malak, whom Ravon took then as his own Sith apprentice. The Emperor commanded Ravon to track down the Rakatan Star Forge space station using ancient star maps, one of which Ravon had found on Kashyyyk alone earlier, and others of which Ravon and Malak both discovered on Dantooine, Tatooine, Manan, and Korriban. Finally, Ravon and Malak located Lehan, formerly the homeworld of the original Infinite Empire, called once Rakata Prime. Ravon took the Star Forge from the now devolved Black Rakata tribe under the One by tricking the Black tribe's adversaries, the Elders, who lived in the Temple of the Ancients, to give it to him so he could destroy it. He did not destroy it. Instead, declaring himself and his cohort now the Dark Lords of the Sith, Darth Ravon and Darth Malak re-entered Republic space with the Star Forge and, in 3959 BBY, began the now so recalled Jedi Civil War. Two years later, the Republic, desperate to end this conflict quickly before it could spread any further, set a trap for Ravon and Malak in the Outer Rim territories. The Jedi commander, Bastilla Shan, infiltrated onto the bridge of Darth Revan's flagship and confronted him. But just then, Darth Malak betrayed them all and, from his own ship, opened a salvo of blaster cannon fire directly at the flagship's bridge. Revan, near death, was saved by the Jedi Shan, but once more, his memories were lost to him. Although Rivon would kill Malak in 3956 BBY, three years later, and after purging the Sith from Korriban as a restored Jedi, would marry his part-time ally and part-time adversary Bastille Shan, it was not more than 30 years before the Sith Empire invaded Republic space and began the Great Galactic War that lasted 28 years and left the Republic totally crippled during the ensuing 12-year-long Republic-Sith Cold War. From the surprise attack on the Aparo sector in the Tingle Arm, Beginning the Great Galactic War in 3681 BBY, until the apprentice of the Treaty of Coruscant era, Darth Barras, executed his master's Plan Zero to begin the Second Great Galactic War in 3641 BBY. For those 40 years, the Sith Empire ruled nearly one half of the populated galaxy. From its reform, 
following the first Dark Council purge in 3950 BBY, until Emperor Tenebrae's first body was killed by the nameless heroic Jedi, the Knight of Tython, in a Dougal in the Dark Temple on Drummond Koss in 3641 BBY. The dominant ruling body over the mighty Sith Empire was the Dark Council of Twelve Dark Lords of the Sith, including the Emperor, Lord Vitiate himself. Although little is known of many of the Dark Council members besides their names, at least 22 members are recognizably identified as having ruled from the establishment of the reformed Sith Empire on Drummond Koss until the Second Great Galactic War began and the Cold War era of Sith Imperial co-dominance of the galaxy began to wane. Those we now know of to serve on the Dark Council during the Great Galactic War include Darth Azamin, Darth Ekage, Darth Mar, Darth Mechus, Darth Sajar, Darth Vauron, Emperor Tenebrae himself, as well as, of course, Exal Kreesh, his first apprentice, Revan and Malak, his second and third apprentices. During the Cold War era, the Dark Council of the Reformed Sith Empire consisted of Darth's Arctis, Azamin, and Howl, of whom no depictions remain, as well as Darth Arho, Darth Decimus, Darth Hadra, Darth Jadis, Darth Mortis, Darth Knox, Darth Ravage, Darth Thanaton, Darth Vengeen, and Darth Zoreed. Long prior to the 40-year ascendancy of the reformed Sith Order, established on Drummond Koss, and prior even to Emperor Tenebrae's first purge of the Dark Council, a fallen Jedi found Sith Lord Naga Sadow, whom had escaped the battles of Korriban and fled to the fourth moon of Yavin. It was the Dark Jedi, Freedon Nad, who betrayed and murdered Naga Sadow in 4,400 BBY, almost 800 years following his defeats in the hyperspace war and at the Battle of Korriban. Freedon Nad, thus, although never of direct lineage to anyone in the Sith Empire, nevertheless is recalled to history as the ninth Dark Lord of the Sith, because even though the reformed Sith Empire of his own era was altogether unknown to, to Nad, he had studied briefly under Darth Naga Sadow before killing him. Nad conquered the planet Onderon and ruled as its global king from the capital city of Aziz as self-proclaimed Dark Lord of the Sith until his physical death in 4350 BBY. The Beast Wars, a protracted civil war on Onderon, followed Freedon Nad's death, and eventually Jedi Knights, led by Arcanian Master Arca Jeth, were sent to intervene. Following the Nadist insurrection, Freedon Nad's tomb was relocated to Onderon's jungle moon called Zoon. Sometime around 4000 BBY, another dark Jedi, this one named Exar Kun, abandoned his Krivaki master, 
Vodosiosk Bass and sought out the tomb of Freedon Nad on Zune, the moon of Onderon. Following further tests on Korriban, where the force spirit of Mark Aragnos, apparently unaware of the existence of the contemporary reformed Sith Empire on Drummond Kos himself, proclaimed Exar Kun a true dark lord of the Sith. Kun eventually conquered Sadao's refuge, the moon Yavin 4, and totally subjugated the remaining Masasai warriors there. Ruling a distant jungle moon was not enough for this dark Jedi, who had been proclaimed Dark Lord of the Sith, and he soon used the ancient Sith battleship of Nagasato, long buried on Yavin 4, to seek out other fallen Jedi and potential converts to his new cult to build a new Sith Empire. His search would eventually lead to the Great Sith War. Exar Kun traveled to the Seven Worlds of the Empress Tita system, where he found a group of other Dark Jedi called the Krath, led by Alima and Satal Kito, and which was partnered with the Mandalorians of the then burgeoning empire of Mandalore the Indomitable. Taking one of the Dark Jedi as his personal apprentice, Exar Kun sided with the Krath of Empress Tita, the Tong Mandalorians, the Brotherhood of Sith from Osus, and, funded by High Lady Breswalt III of the planet Nysus, House Meshetti established their cult as his own Sith Empire. Exar Kun led the Sith Brotherhood to attack the Jedi Library on Osis, and he personally slew the more than a millennium old Drythos Jedi Master Librarian Odon Ur. He led this Sith Brotherhood of fellow fallen Jedi to rebel against their former masters in the Jedi Order, and intended to use them to aid in an attack against the Republic capital world of Coruscant itself. However, his Sith apprentice, Ulic Keldroma, had, while Kun was killing Odon Ur on Osis, taken it upon himself against Kun's predictions of certain defeat, to attack Coruscant with his Tetan, Krath, and Tong Mandalorian fleets, augmented by 300 additional Republic warships captured on Forost. In 3,996 BBY, Ulic Keldroma, Alima Kito of the Krath, and Mandalore the Indomitable launched a total war surprise attack on Coruscant. Retreating from the ground invasion, led by Mandalore, while Queldroma attempted to use a force mind trick to confuse the rallying Republican Jedi generals, his lover, the Krath Witch, Ali Makito, betrayed Keldroma and ordered Mandalore the Indomitable to retreat reporting Keldroma was dead, and thus allowing Keldroma, who was unaware of this all, to be captured by Exar Kun's old Jedi master, Vodo Siosk Boss, brought before the Republic's Supreme Chancellor, branded a traitor, and handed over to the Inquisition to be tried for war crimes and treason. At the trial of Ula Keldroma, his younger brother and fellow Jedi, K. Keldroma, Jedi including Silvar and Nomi Sunrider, the Supreme Chancellor as judge and jury, as well as the rest of the remainder of the Senators, were all in attendance as Keldroma pled his guilt, arguing the irrelevance of the Republic. Just then, however, Mandalore the Indomitable and Exar Kun, the other brotherhood of the Sith 
and the Masasi warriors of Nagasado on Yavin 4, now under Kun's control as well, entered the Galactic Senate where the trial was being held, and, killing everyone in the assembly following a brief puppet show with the Supreme Chancellor's own bloodied head, freed Queldroma. As they departed, Exar Kun dueled his old Jedi master, Vodo Siosk Boss, and slew him. Soon after this, the final successful campaign of the Sith Brotherhood was waged in the First Sith War. Informed on his return by Mandalore the Indomitable of Krath Witch Alima Kito's betrayal, Ula Kildroma and Exar Kun assigned Kito to her final mission, using the ancient Sith flagship of Nagasado's weapons to detonate the five red giant stars of the Kron Cluster near Osis, which she did, dying in the process. During the resultant evacuation of Osis, Ula Keldroma slew his brother Kay in a duel, but was then stripped of his ability to use the Force by Kay's fellow Jedi Nomi Sunrider. Finally, the Sith Brotherhood was brought down when Ula Keldroma stripped of his Force powers and returned to alliance with the Jedi and Galactic Republic, led their forces along with Nomi Sunrider to attack his former Sith Master Exar Kun on Kun's keep on Yavin 4. Exar Kun used a powerful Sith spell to destroy his own Masase warriors, much of the surface of Yavin 4, as well as his own body in an attempt to preserve his Force Spirit beyond death. However, Nomi Sunrider and the other Jedi on Yavin 4 were able to construct a wall of light, using the Force to imprison the Force Spirit of Exar Kun inside a black obsidian tomb below the ancient ruins of the Masasai Temple to Sith Dark Lord Darth Nagasado. In all, only about four or five years had passed between when Exar Kun fell from the Jedi Order to re-establish the Sith Empire, and when his Force Spirit was finally trapped on Yavin 4 by Nomi Sunrider and the other Jedi led there by his own Sith Apprentice, the fallen Jedi redeemed Ulic Keldroma. Between the appointment of human male Jedi Master Sidorna Diath, a settler of Tatooine, as Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic in 4000 BBY, at the beginning of the First Great Sith War, and his death fighting in the Krath Holy Crusades on Basilisk in 3997 BBY, the Republic underwent a massive upheaval recovery from which would last the entire restoration period of 29 years, from 3,995 BBY until 3,966 BBY, following the bloody Battle of Cathar during the Mandalorian Wars. Following Exar Kun's destruction on Yavin 4, the Mandalorians regrouped apart from the Tetan Krath and Brotherhood of Sith under a new Mandalore, Mandalore the Ultimate, and in less than a decade came to rule a greater territory than the Huts had amassed in centuries. On his deathbed, following his final defeat at the hands of the Jedi Knight Revan, above Malachor V in 3960 BBY, Mandalore the Ultimate confessed to Ravon that he had been tempted to invade the Republic by a broken promise of support from the then still unknown reformed Sith Empire. Ravon, after following a trail of clues in the form of ancient Rakata star charts discovered on Dantooine near the Jedi Enclave, discovered from the Treyas Sith Academy on Malkor V, the importance to the Sith of Korriban, and while on his quest in search of these true Sith 
referred to by Mandalore the Ultimate, was captured above Nathema by Darth Scourge and Darth Nyrus of the reformed Sith Empire. Eventually, Ravon was brought before the reformed Sith Empire's ruler, Emperor Tenebrae, by Darth Scourge. Following his killing Darth Nyrus, and taken on as the Emperor's new apprentice. This, along with the introduction around the same time of now Darth Revon's old friend Alec Squint Squinquar Gesimus, now renamed Darth Malak, eventually caused Emperor Tenebrae's original apprentice, the female Sith Exile Kreesh, to flee her station in the Cathal Rift. She would later attempt to lead Republic forces in an attack on Korriban, however failed to sabotage the planet's defenses when she was assassinated by Sith apprentice Teneb Kel and his warrior slave Magat. Darth Revan and his apprentice Darth Malak were tasked by the reformed Sith Empire's ruler, Emperor Tenebrae, and the twelve-member Sith Council on Drummond Kos, with finding the ancient Rakatan superweapon from the height of their infinite empire, the space station called the Star Forge, built contemporary to the life of the original Sithari, King Adas. The Emperor hoped to use the Star Forge in a battle against the Republic, However, Darth Ravon had other plans. Re-entering Republic space in 3,959 BBY, Darth Ravon and Darth Malak, the fallen Jedi appointed Dark Lords of the Sith by Emperor Tenebrae on Drummond Kos, began what has been variously called the Second Sith War the Mandalorian War of the Star Forge, and by the more common term, the Jedi Civil War, that would last only three years, but would leave the already weakened Galactic Republic too devastated to defend itself from the eventual invasion by the reformed Sith Empire itself. Following a series of bloody conflicts, commenced by their initial surprise attack on the Foros shipyards in the Deep Core, continuing with the bombing of Telos IV, a space battle above the Zabrak homeworld of Iridonia, as well as other less major battles and more minor skirmishes, Darth Ravon was finally captured by Jedi Knight Bastila Shan when Darth Malak, Ravon's Sith apprentice, betrayed Ravon fired on his former master's flagship's bridge. Darth Malak believed he had killed both his Sith Master, Darth Ravon, and the Jedi Knight Bastilla Shan in his massive salvo of blaster cannon fire. But he was wrong. He had failed to kill either of them. Ravon, his memories now lost again, was rescued from death above San Pidal, and taken to the Jedi Enclave Council on Dantooine by Jedi Knight Bastila Shan. Following the trail of Revan and Shan, first to the city planet of Terris, which Malak bombarded from orbit with his flagship, the Interdictor class cruiser Leviathan, then destroying the Jedi Enclave Council on Dantooine, while Revan and Sean were away on first Tatooine, then on Kashyyyk freeing the Wookiees, Darth Malak relentlessly pursued the gradually less amnesiac Revan and his companions Jedi Knight Bastila Sean and Republic soldier Kartho Nasi. With such rage, it ultimately blinded him to the threat posed by to his own rule by his doing so. Finally, on board the hangar bay of the Leviathan, in deep space between Manon and Korriban, 
Darth Malak at last confronted his old master Ravon once more, and, following the torture of Ravon, Shan, and Onasi by Sith Admiral Karath, Malak revealed the truth about his own past to Ravon. Ravon forgave Shan, and then dueled Darth Malak, but Shan interjected herself into their duel to distract Darth Malak, allowing Ravon and Onasi to escape in their ship, the Ebon Hawk. Ravon and Onasi infiltrated the Sith Academy of the Shirka Corporation's Drishad settlement on Korriban, and learned from the Academy's Twi'lek headmaster, Uthar Wynn, and his apprentice, Uthar Ban, of the hidden location of the final Rakatan star chart, secreted away in the tomb of Naga Sadow in the Valley of the Dark Lords on Korriban. Once they accessed this, Ravon, Onasi, and a reformed Yathura Ban journeyed to the far distant world of Lehan, once known as Rakata Prime, in pursuit of Darth Malak's doomsday weapon, the Starforge Space Station. Mounting the steps of the Temple of the Ancients on Li Han, once called Rakata Prime of the Infinite Empire, Ravon, Joli Bindu, and Julhani of the Rakata Elders encountered Bastila Shan, whom had been converted and become Darth Malak's Sith apprentice. Fleeing to the Starforge after an undecisive duel between Ravon and Shan, both tempting the other to return to their old ways. Sean fled to the Starforge and was quickly surrounded by a fleet of Hammerhead-class capital ships and Republic blockade runners, supported by A-wing military fighters and assault fighters, led by Admiral Forn Dodonna. Docking the Ebon Hawk on the Starforge with surviving Dantooine Council member Vandar Tokare, Ravon redeemed Sean, and ultimately defeated Darth Malak, his old friend and once fellow Sith apprentice. After the defeat of Darth Malak and the destruction of the Starforge, barely 100 Jedi remained throughout the entire galaxy. Ravon vanished into the unknown regions, leaving his love Sean behind to return to pursuing his quest for the true Sith that had kept resurging in his memories. At this time, Ravon's teacher when he had been a Padawan, the blind female human Jedi Master Historian Kreia, went in search of Ravon, but discovered, instead, the Treas Academy of Ravon's secret Sith assassins on the old Sith planet Malachor V. She was converted to their ways and became Sith Lord Darth Treya, so-called Lord of Betrayal. Jedi Master Artis, hearing of seemingly random assassinations of some of the, by then fewer than 100, remaining Jedi, called the remainder of the Jedi Order to a Jedi Convocation. The Conclave on the Miraluku colony world of Qatar, hoping to use them as bait to lure out their would-be attacker. Unknown to Master Artis, or to any of the other Jedi survivors, their own Master Historian Kreia had defected to form a Sith Triumvirate with two other Dark Lords of the Sith. Her wounded apprentices Darth Zion the Lord of Pain, and Darth Nihilus, the Lord of Hunger. Darth Treya's Sith Triumvirate initiated the first Jedi Purge in an attempt to extinguish the Jedi from the galaxy. However, as with so many Sith, Darth Treya was betrayed by her disciples who attacked her inside the core of the Treon Academy on Malachor V, and permanently disabled Darth Treya from using the Force. 
Darth Treo was cast out of the Sith Triumvirate by Darth's Zion and Nihilus in around 3954 BBY, two years prior to the attack led by Nihilus against the Jedi Conclave on Qatar. However, Darth Treya did not die when Sion Nihilus had stripped her of the Force, and instead had returned to Republic space on the side of the Jedi, with the so-called Jedi Exile, Mitra Surik, Ravan's one-time Padawan, just as Ravan was once Freya's Padawan himself by her side. Treya, following her exile from the Sith Triumvirate, confronted her former apprentice Darth Sion once more, and lost her left hand in the conflict. Using this event, and their peripheral relationship to one another via Ravon as bait, Treya lured Surik into believing them to have a force bond to one another, such that if one died, both would die. Following this, Treya betrayed Surik and the reformed Jedi enclave on Dantooine. Although bested by Surik in a duel, Sorek forgave Darth Treya, who relented and became a Force Spirit when Sorek ordered the destruction of the planet Malachor V using her old friend Zabrak Bao de Ur's spherical remote to activate the Mass Shadow Generator, a device built by Bao Dur and operated by Sorek originally under Jedi Knight Ravon in the Mandalorian Wars that finally destroyed the planet Malachor V utterly. Darth Sion, the first of Darth Treya's two Dark Lord wounded apprentices, had been a Sith Marauder for the Sith Empire of fallen Jedi Exar Kun and Ulic Keldroma during the Great Sith War of 4000 to 3996 BBY. He had found a way to cheat death by keeping his own rotting corpse alive by drawing power from his extreme physical pain, and using this manner survived many death blows dealt him during the Great Sith War, as well as the Jedi Civil War, when he allied with Darth Revan and Darth Malak. His final death came along with his final master, Darth Treya on the ruined world of Malachor V. Darth Sion, or Lord Pain, as he was also called, belonged to Darth Treya's Malachor V Treya's Academy and to her Sith Triumvirate. However, in some time around 3954 BBY, Darth Sion, with his fellow Sith apprentice and triumvirate member Darth Nihilus, stripped their mutual master Darth Treya of her ability to use the Force and banished her from her own Sith triumvirate, and united most of the remaining disparate Sith forces following the end of the Jedi Civil War. Sion would grow compelled to hunt down Treya's next apprentice, the Jedi exile, Mitra Surik, and eventually grew obsessed by his love-hate feelings for her. He pursued Surik and her traveling companions, including his old master Treya, relentlessly, and cornering them at one point on the stern of the Republic vessel Harbinger cut off Treya's left hand in a lightsaber duel. Finally, however, he allowed Surik to escape him, following a prolonged duel in the Sith Academy ruins on Korriban. Sion returned to Malachor V and reassembled the Treus Academy Sith assassins as his guards, awaiting the eventual return of Darth Treya, whom then tricked him into serving her. 
Sion died his final death just before Malachor V was detonated by the mass shadow generator of Baudur. Darth Nihilus, the second of Darth Treya's wounded apprentices, was born a human male and lived during the era when Jedi Knight Ravon fought against Mandalore the Ultimate between the end of the First Great Sith War and the return of Darth Ravon from Sith space at the beginning of the Jedi Civil War. He had the misfortune of being nearly alone in surviving the original implosion of Malachor V by the mass shadow generator of Baudur, when then Jedi General Mitra Surik ordered it activated on the command of then Jedi Knight in Exile, Ravon. Darth Nihilus, also called Lord Hunger, grew so consumed from within by the dark side of the Force that his body withered to dust, yet his armor lived on without it. From his scavenged scrap heap flagship the Ravager, it was Darth Nihilus who decimated the surface of the Miraluka colony world Qatar in 3,952 BBY, where the remaining fewer than 100 Jedi were meeting in Master Artis's arranged conclave, using only his own appetite for power, killing everyone on the planet save one, Visas Mar, a Miraluka woman, Nihilus apprenticed as his shadow hand and tasked to assassinate the Jedi exile, Mitra Surik, who had then returned after decades lost in the unknown regions. Surik converted Mar to the Jedi path, and eventually Surik, Mar, and then Mandalorian leader Mandalore the Preserver confronted and defeated Nihilus aboard the bridge of his flagship, the Ravager, above the planet Telos, which he had just consumed. Then, the reformed Sith Empire swept over. Darth Desolus was a Pawn male Jedi Master, born around 3,000. 522 BBY. At that time, the Jedi Order had once more grown strong, following its near extinction at the hands of the Sith Triumvirate, following the Jedi Civil War. And after the 40-year Cold War with the reformed Sith Empire ended in the Second Great Galactic War with the apparent murder of Emperor Tenebrae by the Jedi Knight, called only the hero of Tython. Following the Second Great Galactic War, which began in 3641 BBY, both the Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic were diminished in resolve and resources. This was the world into which Desilus was born and raised by the Jedi Order. Ambitious for battle, the Pawn Jedi Master eventually declared himself a Sith Dark Lord and was exiled from the Jedi Order. He led a series of ambushes against the Jedi with martial art trained Pawn warriors, in the process personally killing nearly 2,000 individual Jedi, and was eventually defeated only when lured into a trap above Yaga Minor and attacked by the entire Jedi Council at once. In 2000 BBY, some 400 years or thereabouts after Darth Desilus left the Jedi Order, another Jedi, the Umbaran male Master Phanius, left the Order and proclaimed himself Darth Ruin, Dark Lord of the new Sith Empire. He reunited the diminished clans of the reformed Sith Empire under 50 loyal fallen Jedi. 
under his direct command. This new Sith Empire stood as a galactic force to be reckoned with for the next 1,000 years following this event called by modern historians the Fourth Great Schism of the Jedi Order until the Seventh Battle of Rusan and the detonation by Darth Khan of the Thought Bomb exterminating all of the Sith save two. Darth Ruin was driven to madness by his quest for greater powers and eventually became so hated by the leaders of the independent Sith tribes he brought together into his new Sith Empire that eventually they were all unified against a sole enemy. But that enemy was no one in the Jedi Order of the time, but was none other than Darth Ruin himself. He was killed by his followers shortly after founding the new Sith Empire. By 1750 BBY, the heir presumptive to Ruin's new Sith Empire was the Sith Marauder called simply the Dark Underlord. Leading the reinvigorated clan forces of the stagnant, reformed Sith Empire, under Ruin's new Sith Imperial banner, the Dark Underlord consolidated the most elite warriors into an army called the Black Knights, stationed in a Sith temple on the planet Malarev IV. The Dark Underlord's apotheosis in the Jedi Army of the time was Jedi General Murtaugh, who hired a large group of Mandalorian mercenaries to distract the Black Knights while Murtaugh himself planned to sneak into the temple and confront the Dark Underlord, Solo. Murtaugh's plan was a success, but as he struck down the Dark Underlord personally, Murtaugh lost himself to the dark side of the Force. Following the slaying of the Dark Underlord by Jedi General Murtaugh, the next in succession to burden the title of Dark Lord of the Sith was a mysterious man, unaffiliated directly to either the New Sith Empire nor to the Jedi Order of the Day, whose original name is unknown, but who adopted the Sith title Darth Revon following a corruption of Revon's name in an old Sith manuscript. Darth Revon single-handedly terraformed the Kularan system planet Almas using Kaluthan grass and erected an enormous domed fortress on the planet to channel dark side force and harness it to blast lightning bolts into space at passing ships. In 1250 BBY, the Jedi Knights destroyed most of this Sith fortress on Almas and slew Darcene, Revon's apprentice. Darth Revon himself, however, had used his semi sentient force imbued Dark Staff years prior to this Jedi raid and been transported by the Dark Staff into the midst of the Seventh Battle of Rusan which occurred several centuries later. Darth Revon died in 1000 BBY on the battlefield of Rusan and was never buried in his crypt on Almas. His vast library, including his Sithese language autobiography and his copious notes on how to force bond soldiers to their commanding officers, creating what he called a battle lord, was only recovered from the Almas Fortress some 900 years later still during the Clone Wars. Following the disappearance and thusly apparent abdication of Darth Revon from the new Sith Empire around 1250 BBY, the female Shi'ido changeling and dark side marauder Belia Darzu established her dominance in the new Sith Empire 
by staging a series of strikes against the Jedi Order using nanogene technology to create an army of techno-beasts, controlling them all mentally using the Sith alchemical magic of Mekudiru from her twin-towered black durasteel citadel on Tython. When the techno beasts unleashed by Darzu during the Skittis Wars were adjudicated by her fellow clan leaders in the new Sith Empire to be too powerful to control, Darzu was poisoned by the Marcosa Order at the behest of the other Sith. Following the poisoning of Belia Darzu, a rift in the upper echelons of organizing control within the new Sith Empire occurred. Inspired by the massive Sith victory at the Battle of Mizra in 1466 BBY, and sensing the inevitable loss of control by the core worlds over the outer rim following the canceling due to underfunding, of the Rimward Holonet Broadcasting Systems in 1010 BBY. The Coruscant-born Jedi Master Skir Khan defected to the new Sith Empire and sought to reorganize its many competing factions into a more unified front under a select group of fellow fallen Jedi, which he dubbed the Brotherhood of Darkness. The most powerful Sith warlords and clan leaders, Kopech, Cordis, Kasim, Letor, and Chaos Cruel, all pledged their allegiance to the Brotherhood of Khan and the weaker ones fell beneath his military aggressions. Skir Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness, during the Dark Age of the Republic, reconquered Korriban and reestablished the Sith Academy there, and battled the Jedi Lord's Army of Light under Jedi Lord Hoth at sites across the galaxy. Khan carpet-bombed the planets Bespin, Sulust, and Tanab, established a mid-rim, coreward expansion staging ground on Kashyyyk, and from there launched successful attacks against Trandosha and Fasira. Then came the Battle of Rusan. Rusan was a small world near Kashyyyk. The Army of Light under Lord Hoth was using as a jump-off point for attacking Sith-controlled Kashyyyk. Khan easily dispersed the Republic forces staging there with a surprise attack, in which he led the entire Sith fleet himself aboard his flagship Nightfall. The Sith repelled the Republic retaking Rusan in a second battle. In the third battle of Rusan, Jedi Lord Hoth returned with his entire army of light and attacked the Sith fleet around Rusan. In a continuation of this onslaught, the fourth battle of Rusan saw Lord Hoth's army of light land on the surface of Rusan and engage in direct combat with the Sith hordes of the Brotherhood of Darkness. Following inner strife within the upper echelons of the Brotherhood, over Khan's obsession with the conflict on Rusan, Khan unleashed the devastating force of the Thought Bomb and exterminated every living soul on the planet Rusan, including, in the process, himself, Lord Hoth, the other Brotherhood of Sith, as well as the entire Army of Light. Not even the Sith fleet in space, who 
who had been ordered to repel the Republic in the final moments by Darth Bane, survived. Although, from a distant location, beyond the Thought Bomb's blast radius, both Darth Bane and his Sith apprentice, Zana, did survive. When Skier Khan and his few remaining loyalists in the Brotherhood of Darkness made their final stand on Rusan and triggered the Thought Bomb. It was widely believed by the Jedi and the Republic that, in addition to Lord Hoth and the Army of Light, the Thought Bomb had also permanently rid them of their enemies, the Sith. The tragic fates of each soul lost in the battles of Rusan including especially the fallen Jedi and Ersatz Sith, Githeni, compelled the Republic to make sweeping changes to its method, if not form, of government. The Jedi were, in the absence of the direct threat from the Sith, to be retasked away from military service and from government offices and titles. The Rusan reforms were attributed as the cause of the subsequent 1,000 years of peace and prosperity enjoyed by the Galactic Republic. Meanwhile, the Sith had merely gone into a deep seclusion and, from afar, were plotting how best to stage their inevitable revenge. Darth Bane, born a male human named Dressel, on the outer rim planet Apatros, in 1026 BBY, was in every way the opposite of Darth Khan. Whereas Darth Khan began a handsome, even regal, charismatic, and earnest young Jedi Master, Darth Bane began life as a Cortosis miner, working for the Outer Rim or Works Company, living under an abusive father named Hurst, who blamed Dez for killing his mother in childbirth. Whereas, in the end, Khan's sharp, clear, and even crystalline mind was completely clouded enshadowed and overwhelmed by the dark side of the Force. The connection between Darth Bane and the dark side of the Force began as first only a weak inkling, but eventually developed into a keen and reasoning logical faculty, allowing Darth Bane to plot out the long-term effects his newly instituted Rule of Two could play out for his reformed Order of the Sith. And, ultimately, whereas Khan chose the route of cowards and opted for suicide to end his life, Darth Bane survived and continued to thrive for another 20 years after the detonation of Khan's thought bomb on Rusan. Bane was eventually killed by his apprentice, Darth Zana, as he had intended it to be in order to initiate this as a tradition amongst the Sith who would follow in Bane's covert cult, the Rule of Two. Before their falling out, and Bane's eventual leaving of his fellow Dark Lord's Brotherhood of Darkness, Skir Khan, the self-proclaimed Dark Lord of the Sith, told his brother Bane, who would later be recalled in Sith Annals as the resurrection of the original Sithari, King Adas, incarnated. Of the location of Darth Revan's Sith Holocron in the Temple of the Ancients on Lehan, once great Rakata Prime. Following the destruction of the Brotherhood of Darkness with Khan's suicidal thought bomb's detonation on Rusan. Darth Bane, with his Sith apprentice Zana, 
continued their quest for Sith holocrons, leading them to the world of Tython in search of the holocron of Belia Darzu, as well as Bane to Pakrith, in search of that of Darth Andadu. Finally, in 980 BBY, Bane, who had taken on an additional apprentice, Iktachi female assassin Darth Cognus, to spite his own rule of two and provoke her, succeeded in whipping up his first apprentice Darth Zana into such a frenzy of jealousy that she was able to kill him and to thus initiate his prophetic forecasts for future events and set them into motion. After finding Zana, then still only a youngling, but nevertheless recruited to Rusan to fight and die for Jedi Lord Hoth's army of light, to be the final survivor on the otherwise utterly decimated wasteland of Rusan, Following Khan's detonation of the Thought Bomb, Darth Bane trained Zana as his Sith apprentice. Bane was 26 when they first met. Zana was 10. Zana ran several covert missions for Bane that would be typical of the sort performed for their masters by Sith apprentices for the following millennium under Bane's rule of two. She organized the Anti-Republic Liberation Front under Heton to stage a failed assassination attempt on then-Supreme Chancellor Tarsus Valorum, infiltrated the Jedi Temple archives, and destroyed the mind and eventually life of her own one-handed cousin, whose missing hand Zana had taken. The young Rusan urchin, Derovit, by tricking the Jedi chasing them into killing him in the false belief he was actually the mysterious Dark Lord of the Sith they sought, which allowed Zana and Bane to escape Tython into utter seclusion. Zana later took first Dark Jedi's set hearth and ultimately instead Bane's own second student, Darth Cognus, as her apprentices. Darth Cognus had originally been hired to hunt down Bane by Princess Sarah, now ruler of the planet Doan, but formerly raised on Ambria, a small planet where Bane and Zana had blackmailed and then murdered a local healer named Caleb who turned out to have been Princess Sarah's father. Cognus, some twenty years following the supposed destruction of the Sith on Rusan, successfully ambushed, captured, and brought to Doan for imprisonment and torture the acting Dark Lord of his own reformed order of the Sith, Darth Bane himself. Following a skirmish against Zana's temporary apprentice, the Dark Jedi set hearth in a Doan hangar bay, Cognus pledged allegiance to Darth Bane, and again, following the duel between Darth Bane and Darth Zana, Cognus pledged her allegiance now to Darth Zana, who took Cognus as her Sith apprentice. Thus, in time, Darth Cognus presumably following the unknown date of death of Darth Zana, her own Sith master, took on as her apprentice and intended heir the three-eyed male human mutant named Darth Millennial. Although Darth Millennial was able to see the future, he was unable to see the long-term value of such an arbitrary restriction as the rule of two, and eventually he was excommunicated from the reformed order by Darth Zana and fled from her retribution to the ancient homeworld of the reformed Sith Empire, Drummond Kaas. 
from Drummond Koss, Darth Millennial declared himself the supreme prophet of the Dark Side and founded what would later come to be the Prophets of the Dark Side cult there, a religious sect devoted to Sith magic and mind control, only rediscovered during the tenure of then Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, better known now as Darth Sidious. Following the failure to adhere to the strict Rule of Two mandate of the Reformed Order, Darth Cognus had banished Darth Millennial, and next sought out another suitable candidate for apprenticeship in the ways of the Sith. It was not long before the Force provided one for her in the already well-skilled Dark Side Phantom Apparition Projection Technique Method Master, then dubbed Darth Vectivus. Vectivus had worked well into his adult years managing Jonex Mine 811B asteroid mining colony near the planet Bimiel in the MZX32905 star system, which, it turned out eventually, was haunted due to being located on top of a strong dark side force anomaly that was gradually driving his workers insane and causing them to revert in behavioral traits to a condition like the indigenous sentient Minox, and eventually forcing Vectivus to intentionally railroad the mine underwater, financially to induce it to be closed and condemned, allowing him to purchase the property and eventually build a mansion there where he lived to old age, surrounded by his friends and family. Darth Vectivus, the happy, dark lord of this Sith, incorporated his fiduciary common sense with the dark side power-inducing teachings of the Sith holocrons held by Darth Cognus and managed to come out on top. Darth Vectivus trained as his apprentice a male dark lord of this Sith named Darth Guile, who, in turn, Following Darth Vectivus's death, took as his apprentice Darth Gravid. Of Darth Vectivus's apprentice, Darth Guile, history can currently tell us nothing. Of Darth Guile's apprentice, Darth Gravid, we know only that he has ultimately left the Reformed Order and placed a binding hex onto a specific portion of ancient Sith knowledge regarding the survival of the Force Spirit by essence transfer, such that no Sith should subsequently ever discover its existence. Darth Gravid, the mild Dark Lord of the Sith, was in turn murdered by his apprentice, Darth Gain, a female Twi'lek, whom lost an arm, a shoulder, and half of her face in her duel with Sith Master Gravid. Darth Gain, who was the apprentice of Darth Gravid the Mild, took, as her own apprentice, the Twi'lek Darth Ramage, a little-known molecular chemist and metallurgist, working on combining bota and pyronium. His contributions to the Reformed Order along with his holocron lost by Darth Vader in 18 BBY, have been forgotten as irrelevant to the Reformed Order's overall schemes. Darth Ramage's apprentice was a galaxy-wide renowned male Bith, artisanal starship designer and scientific genius, and, under the continued tutelage of Darth Ramage, came to lead a double life, divided between his public persona as Rugis Gnome, famous ship craftsman, and Darth Tenebris, dark lord of the reformed order of Sith. Tenebris killed his master, 
Darth Ramage, when he lost interest in Ramage's more esoteric views of the dark side, and quickly sought out a new apprentice following murdering his master. Seeing the potential for them to bear a strongly force-sensitive offspring, as Gnome, Darth Tenebris arranged the meeting of intergalactic banking clan middle-ranking agent Car Damask with his future wife, and, five years following their eventual conception, Tenebris came to collect his prize from them. Tenebris apprenticed Darth Plagueis, the moon heir of Damask Holdings named Higo Damask, from a youngling on Megiddo. Plagueis, fulfilling the rule of two, would eventually murder Tenebris in the caves of planet Baldemnek and leave his soul to rot there in obscurity for eternity. In defiance of the rule of two, while raising Higo Damask into Darth Plagueis as his only Sith apprentice on the one hand, on the other hand, Tenebris had been training another pupil, a Bith some believed was his son, whom had taken on the title of Darth Venomous, following Plagueis' slaying of Tenebris, and declared himself the rightful heir to Tenebris' Sith lineage. Venomous confronted Plagueis on Sojourn, a manufactured and privately owned moon used by Plagueis and other moons of the intergalactic banking clan as a private vacation retreat. Plagueis bested Venomous in a duel and forced him to ingest coma bloom, a poisonous flower, and, for the next twenty-five years, a quarter of a century, Plagueis conducted abominable experiments on Venomous's body until finally, around the year 42 BBY, Plagueis allowed Venomous to die at last. Darth Plagueis was then undisputed as sole heir of the grand plan of the ancient Sith's direct dynastic lineage. In two years following his slaying of his Bith master Darth Tenebris and his Bith co-apprentice Darth Venomous, he was able to discover a bright young potential for apprenticeship in the ways of the reformed order. The son of a political rival to Plagueis's business interests as Damask on Naboo, Cosigna Palpatine, was so eager to learn from the moon Damask about his ways of the Sith as Darth Plagueis, that he pestered Damask for months, finally working himself up into such a frenzy of devotion he murdered his own entire family while they were all on board the family starship, the Jaffan Three, in hyperspace, and, begging Damask for help, virtually ingratiated his own way into the Dark Lord Sith traditions. Darth Plagueis apprenticed Palpatine under the title Darth Sidious, during a tumultuous time in galactic political activity, and yet managed to navigate his protege into the position of being appointed the Galactic Supreme Chancellor in only a matter of a few decades. Unfortunately for Damask, he would not live to see the event itself, as his apprentice betrayed and murdered Darth Plagueis, the wise Dark Lord of the Sith the night before being sworn in as Grand Chancellor. Declaring himself the Sith Ari, as he gloated over his master's fresh corpse, Darth Sidious realized he was now free of Darth Plagueis' guidance, but also his domination, and thus felt liberated to take countless liberties in applying the strict rule of two of the Reformed Order. He believed he had achieved the revenge of the Sith in being the first Sith ever appointed Supreme Chancellor over the entire Galactic Republic through purely democratic processes. 
However, his full vision for the collapse of this system was only culminated later, under his third apprentice, with the execution of Order 66, the Jedi Purge, and the reformation of the Millennii Old Galactic Republic into the First Galactic Empire, under his own technocratic plutocracy, the Imperial New Order. The first of Darth Sidious's apprentices, prior to his being appointed Grand Chancellor of the entire Galactic Republic, was the male Dathomirian Zabrak, Knight Brother, Darth Maul. Maul had come into Sidious's hands mysteriously as an infant when, while Sidious was on Dathomir, by a member of the Knight Sisters' cult, he was handed over. Although Maul performed many successful covert assassinations for Sidious during Palpatine's rising political career, assisting him along the way by quietly exterminating the voices of dissent. His final task assigned to him by Sidious was to reveal the return of the Sith to the Jedi. Unfortunately, in doing so, he was cut in half by then Jedi Knight Obi-Wan Ben Kenobi in 32 BBY. Maul was assumed dead for many years, until he reappeared during the ensuing Clone Wars between Palpatine and his second apprentice, Darth Tyrannus. Maul had aligned himself with his fellow Dathomir Zabrak knight brother, Savage Opress, and sought blind vengeance against Kenobi. The second of Darth Sidious's apprentices, taken on following the assumed demise of Darth Maul in 32 BBY, was an aged Jedi Master and Count of Sorino, named Dooku, whom renounced his allegiance to the Jedi Order, becoming the final of the so-called Lost Twenty, Jedi of note, to have left the Order. For a brief while, it was uncertain where Dooku's alliance stood, but he quickly removed all doubt by forming the Confederacy of Independent Systems and leading a large secessionist movement of star systems leaving the Galactic Republic to join his side of a widening conflict pitting the CIS droid armies against the clone troopers of Kamino that had been, ostensibly in secret, bred to serve the Republic as soldiers. Dooku too however, was leading a double life, on the one hand as the leader of the Separatist movement, Count Dooku, fallen Jedi, and on the other hand as Darth Tyrannus, loyal to Darth Sidious, whose public role was as Dooku's nemesis, Grand Chancellor of the Galactic Republic Palpatine himself. Tyrannus and Sidious, successfully weakened the resolve of the Republic from within by pitting droids against clones and playing both sides against the middle. In the middle of this Clone Wars conflict was a very Force-sensitive ace pilot and Jedi Guardian Knight, whom many had hailed the apparently midichlorian-induced birth of as heralding him as the Jedi Chosen One according to an obscure Jedi prophecy. His name was Anakin Skywalker, and he would, after slaying Count Dooku, Dark Lord Tyrannus, on the deck of the Malevolence, the flagship of this CIS fleet, during their surprise attack on Coruscant and capture of Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, eventually turn to the dark side, as well and become Darth Sidious's third and most successful apprentice, Darth Vader. Sidious used Vader to pigeonhole all his enemies among the Separatists and Jedi alike into a single sting operation now recalled as Order 66, which also pit the genetically pre-programmed clone troopers against their former Jedi generals. 
The tables turn against the Sith's New Order Galactic Empire suddenly, when, in 4 ABY, in the partially completed second Death Star space station, Sith Dark Lord Darth Vader suddenly betrayed his Dark Master Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine, and threw his body down a reactor shaft. Between the execution of Order 66 in 19 BBY and the destruction of the second Death Star in the Battle of Endor in 4 ABY, only some 23 years passed, but these 23 years saw the birth and growth and development of Darth Vader's twin children, Luke Skywalker and Leia Organa, and their rebel alliance against the New Order. Sith Galactic Empire. At the beginning of these 23 years, there remained only a handful of Jedi to survive the purge of Order 66. Following the end of these 23 years, the Darth lineage of Dark Lords of the Sith was broken, and no further claimants as heir to either it or Palpatine's empire withstood the new hope promised by the Rebel Alliance. Admiral Thrawn, in command of the remaining Imperial naval fleet, and self-proclaiming Dark Lady of the Sith, former Emperor's Hand, Lumaya, were the only remnants of the old Imperial Order, under the now, and rightly, dreaded Palpatine. Following extensive cybernetic replacements to resuscitate her from injuries suffered while on an extended undercover mission as Major Shira Bri to infiltrate the Rebel Alliance and publicly disgrace Luke Skywalker during the years of Alliance attacks against the New Order Galactic Empire. Lumaya was appointed the Emperor's Hand and Shadow Hand of Darth Vader, the Sith Emperor's Apprentice. Lumaya was sent by Vader to the ancient Sith world, Zeost, to recover long-lost Sith artifacts, and she did, indeed, find a relic tome, instructing her in the creation of a light whip. However, while Lumaya was on Zyost, Luke Skywalker dueled Darth Vader and defeated the Emperor's temptation to join the Sith, and the Rebel Alliance destroyed the second Death Star above the forest moon of Endor. Following this period of time, Lumaya largely assumed the administrative duties of a full, acting Dark Lady of the Sith coordinating between the extragalactic Nagai Essard, battling the Yuzhan Vong, and apprenticing three Dark Lords to Sith Ascendancy, among countless other missions run to re-establish solidity in the Sith cause. Lumaya remained, for the most part, a strict adherent of the Rule of Two, although she outlived two of her three apprentices. The first of Lumaya's Sith apprentices was the Force-sensitive Belarone native, male stormtrooper named Flint. Another hopeful on the list of Vader's potential candidates for apprenticeship, like Lumaya herself, and challenging and besting him in the ruins of Vader's abandoned citadel on the planet Vajun, Lumaya dubbed Flint the Dark Lord of Belderon. However, Flint's loyalty to Lumaya was short-lived, and on the planet Naldar was freed from Lumaya's hold on him by his childhood friend Barney, and pledged his allegiance to Skywalker although he would be forced to spend much of his remaining life in an Alliance prison cell of Mandalorian iron. 
Eventually, the tragic existence of Flint, the Dark Lord of Belderon, was brought to an end on his home planet, and he was found stabbed through the throat, presumably executed for his betrayal by Lumaya. The second of Lumaya's Sith apprentices was the male human Imperial Royal Guardsman, Karnor Jax. Recruited by Lumaya around the time of the murder of Flint on Belderone. During these few years, Lumaya and Jax worked together to exterminate potential rival threats to their consolidation of the post imperial Sith sided power structure. To this end, Karnor Jax and Lumaya exterminated the last few remaining pockets of the old prophets of the Dark Side begun by Darth Millennia, almost immediately after the Rusan reforms of around 1000 BBY on the planet Bostherda, and, alone, Jax sought to single-handedly eliminate his entire old regimen of royal guards, which he successfully accomplished, killing them all save one in a surprise attack on the planet Yin Shore. The remaining royal guardsman, a longtime friend and rival of Jax, Kir Kanos, eventually slew Jax in a final battle on Yin Chor. Though continuing to operate behind the scenes in galactic affairs, using the Vectivus holocron to generate force phantoms, fomenting the Corellian Five Worlds separatist movement away from the Federation of Free Alliances, and coordinating with a new order of Sith on Korriban, before being thrust into the midst of the Yuzhan Vong invasion of 25 ABY. Lumaya took no other apprentice for the next 30 years after Karnor Jax. At this point, only pretenders to the Imperial throne and Sithari Regnal Crown remained. For a brief period, in 11 ABY, a Jedi student at Luke Skywalker's Yavin 4 Praxium Academy, the dire-born human male Kip Duran, became possessed by the Force Spirit of Exar Kun, and, stealing the Imperial-era superweapon ship the Sun Crusher, went on a rampage against the remaining Imperial fleets, in the process accidentally killing his own brother. Kip Duron returned from this possession by the Force Spirit of ancient Sith Lord Exar Kun, and eventually went on to become one of the first Jedi Masters to sit on the Jedi High Council. He eventually opposed ceding more control over the Jedi Order, to Chief of State Omas, following the border conflict between the Chiss Ascendancy and the insectoid Killick species, but would eventually find himself openly fighting against it in battle after Jason Solo took control of the Galactic Alliance during the Second Galactic Civil War, beginning 40 years ABY. Fosh female Jedi Padawan, Verger, had escaped the Jedi Purge in Order 66, having disappeared around 30 BBY when she discovered an advanced force of Yuzhan Vong on Zanama Zsikat and chose to live with them there for the next 50 years. By the time Lumaya met Verger, Verger's own fallen Sith apprentice, Asharad Het, had been contacting Lumaya from Korriban for some time to warn her of the impending Yuzhan Vong invasion of 25 ABY. Lumaya and Verger plotted on how to turn Darth Vader's grandson, Jaken Solo, against both Luke Skywalker's new Jedi Order, as well as the new Sith Order under the rule of one Sith, 
a shard het from Korriban. Verger, a Sith to some, a Jedi to others, died in 28 ABY, three years following the Yuzhan Vong invasion. Twelve years after the death of Verger, in 40 ABY, Dark Mistress of the Sith, Lumaya, lured Jason Solo, his cousin Ben Skywalker, and a fellow Jedi, Nalani Din, to Lumaya's hideout in the ancient mansion of Darth Vectivus, the happy Dark Lord. She convinced Jason Solo that Verger was a Sith, which she did not even know at that time, but which subsequently was revealed to Lumaya's assistant, the female Twilight Darksider Elima Rar, by Het on Korriban, to be true. Jason Solo, convinced by Lumaya to join the Dark Lords of the Sith and adopt the Rule of Two, rather than to accept rule by Ashar at Het's Rule of One new Sith Order on Korriban, Finally, after months of training Solo, Lumaya tasked him with finding his own apprentice and, facing her lifelong foe Luke Skywalker, in one final duel, Lumaya fell to his blade. Jason Solo, now trained in the ways of the Sith by Lumaya and Verger, and given the title Darth Kytus, would, only a single standard year later, with seemingly all the plans of the Sith for aeons prior to then, lie in a dead pile on the floor of a starship bridge above Shidu Mad, near the Happy's Cluster. After leading the combined fleets of the Galactic Alliance and the Imperial Remnant during the Second Galactic Civil War, Kytus eventually fell into a trap set for his fleets by Jedi Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, and while his flagship, the Anakin Solo, sustained heavy damage in the firefight, Jason was too preoccupied to prevent his twin sister, Jaina Solo, from boarding and sneaking up on him. Following a fateful duel, Jaina slew her brother Jason Solo, Darth Kytus, piercing his heart with her lightsaber. Tahiri Vela, a new order, Jedi Knight, born on Tatooine, had been taken by Jason Solo when he became Darth Kytus to be his Sith apprentice. However, following his death, Ben Skywalker, Solo's cousin, managed to redeem Vela and restore her to the Jedi path. Vela had been captured from the Jedi Praxium on Yavin 4 by the Yuzhan Vong and shaped by Mishan Quad and Nen Yim of the Vong to become a Jedi Vong hybrid with a split persona named Rena Quad. Having loved, albeit perhaps only from afar, Anakin Solo, Jason's younger brother, whom she had seen killed on Mirkir, when Jason, as Darth Kytus, approached Vela to join him and rule the galaxy together as Dark Lords of the Sith, she at first accepted, but, after performing a single mission for Kytus and assassinating Imperial Head of State Gilad Palion at the Second Battle of Fondor, Vela quickly renounced the Sith objectives and, with the guidance of Ben Skywalker, was guided back onto the path of the Jedi. It was a dark time for the Sith, and it seemed their long struggle might finally be at an end. But there was another Dark Lord of the Sith, the male human Jedi Padawan of Masters Kayati Mundi and Anya Kuro, a Sharad Het, the Tuscan from Tatooine, was born in 47 BBY and served as a Jedi general in the Clone Wars, later escaping Emperor Palpatine's Jedi Purge 
dubbed Order 66. Going into self-exile on first Tatooine, and later following his expulsion from his home world by Obi-Wan, Old Ben Kenobi, working as a bounty hunter, Het eventually found the Sith holocron of Zozan, one of the Dark Jedi Black Legions, to be banished following the first great schism in the Jedi Order. Zozan's Force Spirit, imbued in her holocron, was almost as ancient as the title of Sithari itself, dating back to the original arrival of the exiled Black Legions to Korriban to subjugate the Sith species. Het went into self-exile again, this time in the unknown regions, but was abducted by a Yuzhan Vong scout ship and experimented on by Verger. Following this encounter, Het changed his name to Darth Crate and established his base on the ancient Sith tomb world of Korriban. He sought to reform a new Sith order under a rule of one, that one being not one person or another, but the good of the Sith as a collective whole itself. Prior to the Yuzhan Vong invasion of 25 ABY, Crate had attempted to contact and warn Lumai of the impending extragalactic threat. However, following the Yuzhan Vong wars, Lumaya had grown, for Crate's liking at least, too obsessed in turning Jason Solo into the ultimately ineffectual Darth Kytus. From well behind the scenes, Crate's minions orchestrated the eventual collapse and defeat of the Galactic Alliance and its replacement once again with the Second Galactic Empire. The New Jedi Order had sided with the remaining non-exiled Yuzhan Vong on the so-called Osis Project to re-terraform worlds that had been destroyed during the Yuzhan Vong invasion. Sabotaging this project and making the Jedi and Vong appear at fault, Krayt weakened the interior resolve of the Galactic Alliance and eventually their tenuous ties with the Fell Imperial Council of Moths under Emperor Roan Fell. Following their forced alliance following the Battle of Shedu Mod and the end of the Second Galactic Civil War, finally broke when the Moths demanded retribution from the Vong, the Jedi, and the Alliance and declared war on them all. Within three years, the Galactic Alliance was crushed or dissipated by the Fell Empire, and the Jedi abandoned their ancient temple on Coruscant and retreated to their newly re-terraformed successfully, Sanctuary on Osis. At that point, Kraid stepped forward, and at over 170 light years of age, he stormed Coruscant marched into the audience chamber of Emperor Rowan Fell, and, killing him and tossing his corpse aside, simply sat down on the chair himself. In 130 ABY, the Galactic Empire of the Sith was restored. Realizing the extreme degree of his advanced decrepitude, Darth Crate became increasingly obsessed by two goals, exterminating the real Emperor Rohan Fell. Having discovered the man on the throne he had killed in his haste had only been a decoy, a body double, guard for the real Emperor Fell, and tracking down the last Skywalker, a young man named Cade, son of Cole Skywalker, a descendant of Luke and Anakin Skywalkers, and Morgan Cord, who, in the guise of Nina Kalexti, served as a moth on the High Council of the Fell Empire, prior to Kraid's ascendancy. It had been Kalexti whom Kraid, then still called the One Sith, 
had approached to pit the fell Imperial Moffs against the Yuzhan Vong, the New Jedi Order, and the Galactic Alliance. Crate eventually captured Cade Skywalker during a series of battles against the remaining disparate rebels against his new Sith Empire, but Cade, following humiliating most of Crate's most loyal fellow Sith Lords in individual combat, only barely escaped defeat by Crate by the sudden appearance of Morgan Cord, aka Moff Nina Kalixte, who shot Crate in the back, momentarily stunning him. With his inner circle of personal warriors bested so easily, and his hopes of using Cade to gain some secret to attain immortality be so quickly dashed off a cliff, Krayt flew into a rage and redoubled his campaigns of slaughter against rebels within his new Sith Empire, exterminating or internment camping the Mon Calamari populations, for the Mon Calamari councils having supported the Galactic Alliance remnant. However, nearing blind desperation to find Skywalker and cure his advanced and painful aging process, Krayt, along with his acolyte Sith, Darth Weirlock, allowed himself to be led blindly to Had Abaddon, following reports sent in the form of his scouts and advanced stormtroopers being transformed using Sith magic into ancient Sith spawn rag cools of Cade Skywalker being held captive there. When Krayt arrived, he was betrayed by the force spirit of ancient Black Legion and Korriban colonist Karnes Moore, whom had summoned him there, and fell into a trap set by Cade Skywalker and his allies in the New Jedi Order, and finally, being completely ambushed and literally thrown off a cliff, Darth Curry was nearly killed by his own acolyte, Darth Weirlock, who subjected him to repeated volleys of Sith lightning until Krayt was totally subdued. But Darth Krayt lived on, and was preserved in a stasis chamber on Korriban in the Temple of Zozan by Darth Weirlock. Subsequently, Krayt was discovered to have left his own life-supporting armor in the tomb, he had healed himself from the Vong experiments done on him by Verger, replacing his arm and left eye now some 125 years behind him. And when the other members of his ascendant new Sith Empire Dark Council, his confederacy of carefully chosen warriors as Dark Lords of the Sith, rushed to ascertain the truth about their leader's supposed death, Krayt himself reappeared in the deep catacomb of tombs beneath the Zozan Temple. Krayt revealed his secret to them then, that he had built an army of Sith troopers, cybernetically implanted force sensitives he had abducted from their families as newborns, and had designed plans for a new Sith starfighter to serve as warships. Then Darth Krayt journeyed to Coruscant, and, following faking defeat to win a deadly lightsaber duel with him, slew the treacherous Darth Weirlock. The newly reborn Darth Krayt and his new Sith Empire unleashed the Hounds of Hell across the galaxy. However, with tactics and strategies fit for a true Dark Lord. Vinzoth fell to the Sith Empire's attacks, Borosk was returned to Sith Imperial control, and Falin was bombed for refusing to ally to the Sith Lords. Lastly, Krayt planned an attack on the world Tyvus, supposedly home to the hidden Jedi Temple, but kept the existence and location of his secret weapon, the Sith Troopers in his own design Sith Dragon Ships, for only his fellow Dark Lord Darth Nile whom Krayt tasked as commander of this reinforcement fleet. It was believed on both sides their victory was assured, as each believed they held more Sabak cards up their sleeve than their rival. 
As Darth Crate's fleet entered Tyva's space, the first trap was sprung, when two additional factions suddenly entered the fray, the fleets of both the deposed former Emperor Roan Fell and those stolen Imperius class Star Destroyer warships under the command of Raider Admiral Gar Stasi, whom had allied himself with Fell's resistance movement. Seeing the brutality inflicted on the peaceful inhabitants by Crate on Mon Calamari, which had been an act of retribution on Crate's part, in turn, for the theft of the Imperious Star Destroyer by Admiral Stasi. For some time, the battle seemed to sway in favor of the Jedi's allies, Rowan Fell and Admiral Stasi. Then Crate ordered in Darth Nile's Sith Trooper Armada in their refined and newly built dragon ships. The Sith troopers killed everyone on the battlefield indiscriminately, and once the Alliance's twin fleets were largely deflected and retreated into hyperspace, the Sith troopers of the Dark Council stood victorious above the wreckage of the fleet organized by the Imperial Council of Moths. All of Krayt's enemies were rubble beneath his feet, but his mind remained fixated around Cade Skywalker, and he still intended to turn him to Sith allegiance. Finally, the routed forces, still loyal to the deposed former Emperor Rohan Fell, with a few of the remaining moths to survive the terrible onslaught of the Sith troopers above Tyvus, faced certain doom being hunted down by Krayt, or could risk a suicide mission to symbolically liberate Coruscant. They opted for the latter, and fell, having secretly worked with the captured Sith witch Darth Maladai to create a biological weapon called Omega Raid to target only the Sith Lords, believed they would still be able to pull off a few surprises as well. They were wrong as it turned out that Darth Crate had sent Darth Maladai to develop Omega Red for the purpose of contaminating and killing all on Coruscant except the Sith Dark Lords who alone were immune. In 138 ABY the Fell Alliance fleet attacked Sith Imperial Coruscant with Cade Skywalker disabling the planetary defenses from the surface to allow the fleet to freely bombard the once majestic galactic capital planet. While the fell imperialist fleet carpet bombed the Sith imperialist city world from above, Cade sought out and confronted Darth Krayt in the capital city itself on the surface below. Cade dueled Krayt, and Krayt eventually convinced he had turned Cade Skywalker to the dark side lowered his defenses for only the briefest of instants, and Cade, proclaiming himself a Jedi, thrust his lightsaber through Crate's heart. Knowing Crate's force spirit would inevitably return if allowed to live on following his bodily death, Cade then began piloting a suicide run in his mother Morrigan ship, aiming its prow directly toward the star at the system's core, Coruscant Prime. Finally, following conflicting visions occurring to him from both the Force Spirits of Krayt and his ancestor Luke Skywalker, Cade Skywalker abandoned ship at the last moment and sent the remains of Darth Krayt hurtling into incineration in the solar umbra of Coruscant Prime. Although this act instantly broke the Sith Empire, and allowed the Alliance forces to reform the political structure into the Galactic Federation Triumvirate. The remaining Dark Counselors, his personal warriors and surviving Sith troopers, remained loyal to Darth Krayt's one Sith cult's vision, but decided to approach their quest for galactic dominance rather than by military might, instead by infiltrating all the planetary governments to eventually destroy the new galactic political system from within.